and welcome to Explore the Unknown, the True Crime Edition. Now, here we discuss and go over the most shocking and terrifying cases all over the world. If you find this story compelling, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and also the bell to stay up to date each time we go over a new shocking and bizarre cases. We do this three times a week. Please let me know your thoughts on this case as we do love to hear your intake on it in the comments below. Now, before we get started, we want to extend and send our thoughts and prayers to all that are affected by this case. The case of Baby Gabriel. This case is still unsolved about Baby Gabriel. His mother and father were Elizabeth and Logan Johnson. Their marriage was in a very rocky relationship right from the start. Now, when Elizabeth had became pregnant, she wanted to get an abortion. But however, later, she had changed her mind and said that she wanted to have the baby. As Gabriel was born, she started to not take care of him, according to his father, Logan, that she did not handle being a mother very well to Gabriel. She wanted to leave the baby when he would cry and she'd go into the next room so she wouldn't have to hear him. Logan said that he always was being careful around her. She was very unpredictable. According to Logan, she would cut up all his clothes, socks, shirts, shoes, and would cut up out the tongue of his, of his shoes and cut his laces in half. He could not take it any longer in this unstable relationship. They had to fill it up and in the separation, she had told Logan that she wanted to give Gabriel up for adoption and Logan had refused and he wanted to keep the baby. He would never sign off of getting him adopted. Then they finally wound up getting a divorce and went to court. The judge had made the couple to have both shared custody of Gabriel and also shared visits. In December of 2009, Gabriel was only eight months old, and it was Logan time to have Gabriel. He was excited because he and his family wanted to take Gabriel to see Santa and take pictures. Went over to Elizabeth's house as planned to pick up Gabriel. When he had knocked on the door, there was no answer. And then he looked in the windows all around the house to see what's going on. And as a shock, he did see a dresser's drawers and they were all pulled out and they were empty. As he looked closer, he did see in the closets, all the clothes were gone. Gabriel and Elizabeth vanished. Logan had went to the police to let them know about the child missing. They told him that they could not do anything until Logan finds Elizabeth and the baby of her whereabouts. Days and weeks had went by, and it was Logan's time to have him again for Christmas. It wasn't till eight days on December 27th, after Elizabeth and Gabriel had went missing, that Logan had got a text from a number. He didn't recognize it. It said, You will never find me. I'm already boarding a plane out of the country. When I'm safe, I'll email you the exact location of dead Gabriel's little blue body if the garbage doesn't come first. Logan was in shock and fear. He dialed the number and Elizabeth had answered. And this is what she said to him. Where are you? Where's Gabriel? What? No, you didn't. That's not good. It's nothing to tell. I told you, Logan. I told you. You made me do this. You did not hurt Gabriel. That's success. That's success. You did not hurt Gabriel. That's success. That's success. 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 In horror with what she had said, he did not know if he would want to believe her or not. It was not till later that they found out that Elizabeth had fled to San Antonio, Texas. This was a mystery, and why would she want to go to a place that 
She had no one there. According to Fox 29 reporter Yami Virgin, Elizabeth had her priority was to find work, and she had went to a strip club to find it. It was verified when the reporter had went in there and talked to a couple of the girls, and they said yes, Elizabeth did come in on one night to, to do a tryout. The police had been searching for Elizabeth and Gabriel for a long time, and there were nowhere to be found, and the trail had gone cold. Then Elizabeth had got on a bus to go to Florida, and Gabriel was not with her. It was not long that the police had caught up with her and arrested her in Miami, Florida. She was charged with kidnapping. As they took her into the police station, she had changed her story and said that Gabriel was not dead, that he is alive, and, well, that he is with a couple, and that she had made arrangements at the park from an underground adoption agency, and it was two days right after Christmas. She had met them, and she gave Gabriel to them and walked away, never to look back. She would and never has said who the couple were. Now, San Antonio is known for the biggest, dirtiest underground adoption agencies of the capital of the United States. Who knew, huh? That there is a lot of sleazy hotels that mothers to be go have their babies, hand the baby over to the underground adoption agency, they pay the mother, and she leaves the hotel. And according to the adoption expert, Elizabeth Dernovich, that there was a big notorious adoption agency there in the black market adoption, and of course gray market adoptions, where there is an attorney to take care of it. That was close to where Elizabeth was staying with, was that gray market adoption agency. She was broke and very young, and did not really want Gabriel anyway so she might have just cut them a deal to get rid of him. After she was picked up and arrested in Miami, she was extradited back to Arizona. Here in court, she was charged with kidnapping and a custodial interference. She was not charged with murder due to there was no baby's body found. While she was awaiting trial, a huge development had come up. The detectives had claimed that before heading to Texas, Elizabeth had tried to give Gabriel up to Tammy and Jack Smith, who lived in Arizona, and they wanted to adopt Gabriel so much. They had arrested Tammy because she was accused of lying on court documents that the plan was to adopt Gabriel without his real dad's approval. She had forged her cousin's name on a document saying that he could be Gabriel's father, all knowing that he wasn't. So woman on trial in connection with the baby Gabriel case, here's her own words used against her in court. ABC 15's Corey Wrangle shows us how a police interview could hurt Tammy Smith's case. Tammy Smith teared up as she listened to a two-hour taped interview between her and a Tempe police detective. I thought we were trying to find a baby, and I'm not understanding no, the line no, of question. You, no, the line of question is this. You're a person of interest. At one point, the detective seemed to catch Smith in a lie when the detective asked Smith if she had ever forged a court document in an attempt to adopt baby Gabriel. Okay, I didn't sign you. any paperwork. Oh, I didn't yourself. file any paperwork. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. But after Smith told the detective she never signed or filed any paperwork, the detective then showed Smith this document, causing Smith to change her story. Oh, that, okay, so that is my writing. Yes, that is, right here is mine. Smith has been charged with forgery for writing her cousin's name on a paternity document in an attempt to get custody of baby Gabriel. During the interview, played in court, Smith admitted she knowingly lied on the paperwork. I made a huge mistake. It steps into the role of interfering, okay? It steps into, it's not the only thing that's come up. Can I get in trouble okay. for this? Am I going to get in trouble for this? Um, I, mean, I believe that there will be a, a criminal consequence to it. Baby Gabriel has not been seen since December of 2009. Smith has not been charged in his disappearance just in the attempted abduction. Smith is expected to take the stand in her own defense later this week. Corey Rangel, ABC 15 News. 
She had said that she was just helping Elizabeth fill out the adoption paperwork for her. And as she was doing that, she was helping Elizabeth to take care of baby Gabriel too. Tammy and her husband never did adopt Gabriel, but Tammy has said that she did try to get him, but without success. They did find Tammy guilty of conspiracy to commit custodial interference and forgery. After Tammy's release, she had went on to ABC 15 Phoenix and said that she still to this day does not know the fate of little Gabriel and her heart is broken that they did not get a chance to adopt him, that God and Elizabeth are the only ones that really know where and what happened to Gabriel. She did serve 30 days in jail. This did not set well with Elizabeth, however. At, she did face the possible sentence of 27 years for kidnapping and the other charges. She was so upset that she had even to the point she had mailed a letter to the judge that had sentenced Tammy. And this is what it said. On September 4th, 2012, it was Elizabeth Day in court. Now, in the opening statements, the prosecutor had said that Gabriel was just used as a pawn, that she used him as a tool, that Gabriel was just a piece in her game. Elizabeth's attorney had said that the jury to ignore the fact that baby Gabriel has been missing for years and his client refusing to reveal where baby Gabriel is. Just ignore it. As there was a testimony going on, she would not handle it very well. She had started to break down and cry and they would give her a break to collect herself. When the jury had deliberated, they would not reach a verdict of kidnapping charges as it was finally had been dropped. Then they did find her guilty on October 18th of 2012. And in her statement to the judge, she had said this. What I have done is, you know, unconscionable. What I have done is just, it's unbelievable. And it's not really anything I can say for myself because I'm sitting there and I'm seeing it all. And I would convict myself, you know, I'm watching everything and it is, I mean, it is horrible. I, I don't know. So I'm, you know, I don't know what to say to you. I, I see how I, you know, I do deserve the maximum I do. Then in December 7th, 2012, her sentencing was that she will serve five years. She did get credit for the time served already to almost close to three years she still had to serve another little over two years. Then she was released on probation that she cannot go out of the state without permission first. This was on her conviction of conspiracy to commit custodial interference. Then she was released on July 11th, 2014. However, there were people on the internet that was keeping tabs on her whereabouts and had tipped off the authorities that Elizabeth, then 29, had left out of state to get married on July of 2015. But she failed to let them know that she was going out and that she had gotten even married. She was arrested on April 21st of 2016. She did serve 20 days of probation violation. The judge had said to her, people of your generation, do not want to surrender to authority. He said shortly before issuing his sentence, being on probation means that you have to follow the rules. These are dumb mistakes that you made, but there are mistakes showing that you don't want to submit to authority. She would have to wear an electronic monitor for the rest of her probation, which ended in July 26th of 2018. Meanwhile, the investigators were still looking for Gabriel's body, even looking into Texas landfills, because they felt that this was a homicide and not just a missing child. 
Homicide investigators believe that aspects surrounding the disappearance of baby Gabriel involve elements of a possible homicide. Logan's family still think that Gabriel is alive, so they had went to find where Gabriel was during all of this. Logan's cousin Lisa Peters said that she went to a gas station close to where Elizabeth was staying at, and there they showed the picture of Elizabeth. The girl there remembered her coming in with her baby. She was buying snacks, gas, and stuff. To this day, baby Gabriel is still missing, or maybe even dead due to what his mother was saying. There has been no photos of him for years. No one has seen him for years. They did do a composite of what he would look like as of today. His father, Logan, wishes that he could find him, and if he's still alive, bring him home, where he could be loved and that he could meet the rest of the family. Logan and his girlfriend named Rebecca Garrett has three other children, and they want Gabriel to meet them. As for Elizabeth, or whatever name she is using now, she was 33 weeks pregnant. As for what she had posted on Facebook and of course TikTok, she has been remarried to someone named Martinez. She has probably by now had her baby, but I cannot confirm if she has it or not. There were nowhere on the internet that I could find out about her location except she lives in New Mexico. She is a car saleswoman in New Mexico as that's where she's working. Also, she is taking full-time classes, but I do not know where or for what she's taking classes for. As for her looks, she seems to have changed her hair back to blonde again, according to her Facebook. Elizabeth, in a tearful statement, had been said, stupid decision she had made. It has been a struggle for me the last few years. I understand that I need to do better, and I'm doing better. In the last six months, I believe I've overcome a lot of personal issues. I'm sorry. The family of Logan worries and prays for that new baby she is carrying, or had already, that hope that she will love that baby more than she had loved and took care of Gabriel. They still keep looking everywhere for Gabriel. Logan has never stopped, and he wants him home. The family has hired a group of retired FBI agents from San Antonio to look into this case to see if they can find and locate Gabriel in hopes to get some answers. Now, baby Gabriel, or now his name is Gabriel, he should be around 13 years old as of today. Well, this is it for today, guys. We do really appreciate you being here with me. Now I'm gonna be off for another case. And until next time, please take care and be safe. We'll see you then. Bye.